While all research is valuable, a lucky few scientific discoveries rocket us into the great unknown, both in terms of answering important questions as well as opening up entirely new areas of study. And biology often takes a back seat to the more flashy sciences like physics when it comes to great discoveries. But the study of life, its origin, how it works, and how to keep it going are just some of the greatest mysteries in science. These are 15 discoveries that have helped shape modern biology as we know it today and far into the future. These discoveries have affected nearly every facet of biological science and have driven research into new and ever-expanding directions. So without further ado, let's get to them. Number 15, Inheritance and Evolution. By now, the story of Charles Darwin and his finches, Gregor Mendel and his peas, and even Alfred Wallace's worldwide travels have become common lore both in and outside the world of biological sciences. But their long-reaching conclusions have helped to spur the explosion of growth in the area of biology for the last 170 years. And while it would take the discovery of DNA in the 1950s to sow the seeds of genetic evolutionary studies, we all still owe a huge debt to these naturalist founders who laid the groundwork for many of the things that we now take for granted when conducting our research. Number 14, Antibiotics. Alexander Fleming wasn't setting out in 1928 to revolutionize biological sciences when he discovered that something in penicillium mold spores was able to kill staphylococcal bacteria in a petri dish. As is often the case in science, discoveries make remarkable impacts on the research that are totally unrelated to the fields in which they were created to help. Fleming was just trying to find a way to prevent anaerobic infections from being so deadly. But along the way, the discovery of antibiotics have been utilized in innumerable research studies, as selection tools in transformation and in cell culture, as well as a host of other fields of studies. Number 13, gel electrophoresis. It's difficult to imagine any biology lab without the ever-present bench of gel rigs, either humming with the sound of electrical current dutifully separating out proteins, DNA, or RNA, or maybe sitting vacant and patiently waiting for another agarose or acrylamide gel. It is just as remarkable to realize that electrophoresis as we know it was actually discovered in 1931 by Arne Tisilius, and even earlier work was done in the early 1800s that provided the groundwork for the Tisilius apparatus to differentiate between proteins. But it wasn't until the 1940s that scientists started using gel matrices to separate compounds into discrete bands. And it wasn't until the 1960s that gel electrophoresis would really be used to start identifying DNA in other biological molecules that would give birth to the field of molecular biology as we know it today. Number 12, the HeLa cell discovery. The cervical cancer cells that were taken from Henrietta Lacks before she died in 1951 had become a benchmark in the history of cancer research and knowledge. Regardless of the unfortunate controversy around how the cell line was procured, the immortal HeLa cells made medical research easier, more robust, and repeatable. That cell line was instrumental in the creation of Salk's first polio vaccine in 1952. And since its discovery, there have been over 11,000 patents created involving the HeLa cells. I think it's safe to say that without Henrietta's cells, a great body of research would have been terribly slower and biomedical advancements so much more ponderous if they could have even advanced at all. Number 11, the structure of DNA. As with the discovery of inheritance and evolution, the story of the discovery of the structure of DNA is well known. Starting with Rosalind Franklin's first image of the double helix in 1952, and then subsequently Watson and Crick's model of the double helix structure in 1953. However, Oswald Avery had actually already identified DNA in 1944 as the primary point for hereditary information. But the structure of DNA cannot be overlooked for its relevance in our understanding of so much of what is now considered common knowledge in biological science. Number 10, DNA polymerase. 
In 1956, Arthur Kornberg and his lab forever changed the world of molecular biology with the discovery of DNA polymerase from E. coli cells. And at one instant, scientists were now finally capable of synthesizing new DNA sequences onto an existing DNA strand. And the use of the original DNA polymerase and the subsequent polymerases discovered by Arthur's son Thomas Kornberg, among others, have created the bedrock of molecular biology in regards to PCR, cloning, transformation, and sequencing. Without these workhorses of the lab, much of what we currently understand about our DNA and what we understand about life would be non-existent. Number nine, first transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase was independently discovered by both Howard Temin and David Baltimore in 1970. As a revolutionary tool, reverse transcriptase finally allowed scientists to synthesize both cDNA and double-stranded DNA from RNA and bridge the large gaps in knowledge of the character and sequence of RNA by use in PCR. Discovering the roots of RNA and its translation into proteins is a fundamental necessity of biology, and the realization that RNA could be transcribed into DNA was paramount in the understanding of retroviruses and later, antiviral drugs. Number eight, restriction enzymes. Originally, the first restriction enzymes were discovered in the early 1950s by Salvador Luria, Gene Weigel, and Giuseppe Bertani. But the enzymes those researchers found were all type one enzymes that cleave DNA randomly from any recognition site. In 1970, Hamilton Smith and Associates discovered the more popular type two restriction enzymes ones that cleave at their site of recognition. Later, Daniel Nathan showed that by cleaving in those places, they could separate the fragments via gel electrophoresis in order to map the DNA. The use of restriction enzymes to produce a predictable cleaving pattern to work from has become a benchmark in cloning and mapping. Number seven, E. coli transformation. Bacterial transformations have been around since the 1920s. E. coli was being utilized as a model organism in microbiology and other biological fields for most of the 20th century, but it was considered intractable to transforming until Morton Mandel and Akiko Higa were able to induce it to take up DNA with the use of calcium chloride in 1970. The discovery of artificially induced competent E. coli cells created one of the easiest and most efficient transforming bacteria. And then that discovery led to even simpler cloning methods in all of biological science. The use of E. coli has only grown in popularity as one of the most common model organisms in all of science. Because of that, it was one of the first organisms to be completely sequenced in 1997. Number six, PCR. Few discoveries have revolutionized their fields as much as polymerase chain reactions otherwise called PCR. Likewise, PCR owns its own revolution to the previously discovered thermally stable DNA polymerase. PCR may have first been discussed in 1971 by Shel Kleppa, but prior to Kerry Mullis' work in 1983 to reinvent the enzymatic assay to utilize a DNA template, primers, and heat cycles, cloning was slow and tedious. And even in the early days of PCR, the heat cycle would denature the polymerase and require it to be added again every cycle. But now PCR may be the single most indispensable technique used in all of modern biology. Number five, bioluminescent markers. Bioluminescence has been observed for millennia, but the understanding of its nature and the reaction that produces it has remained a mystery until fairly recently. In 1955, Osamu Shimomura was the first to crystallize luciferin from ostracods. And then he was later instrumental in the discovery of GFP from jellyfish. Firefly luciferase was finally cloned in 1985. But the use of bioluminescence as a marker really began in 1986, when it was first utilized as a gene marker in both tobacco and Arabidopsis plants. And then by 1988, it was being utilized in mammalian cell lysates as a prominent tool for in vivo studies of gene regulation. Bioluminescent imaging is still one of the most widely used applications in both in vivo and in vitro research in nearly every biological system. Number four, gene therapy. Gene therapy has been seen as a science fiction for most of the 20th century, 
a nearly magical way to cure genetic diseases. But in 1972, Theodore Friedman and Richard Roblin first introduced the possibility that it might someday become a reality. And then by 1990, William French Anderson was given permission by the U.S. National Institute of Health to conduct a clinical trial for a patient with a severe immune system deficiency. Cancer gene therapy trials subsequently were approved in 1992, and many other genetic disease therapies have been conducted in the decades since. While gene therapy remains a miraculous opportunity for many of our worst genetic diseases, there is also much to be concerned with over its possible misuse and the ethics surrounding it. Number three, fluorescent protein markers. Along with bioluminescence, fluorescent markers have made an unequivocal impact on research. Perhaps it is appropriate then that Osama Shimomura would have been instrumental in the discovery of both. Green fluorescent proteins, often called GFP, was first discovered by Osama and jellyfish in the 1960s, along with the blue equorum protein. Later, Douglas Prasher utilized GFP and recorded this genetic sequence in 1992, which then allowed it to be expressed in E. coli cells in 1994 and later in the nematode model C. elegans. The use of bioluminescent and fluorescent markers have let us visualize the mysteries of the cell, as well as the protein-protein interactions inside, outside, and even in between the cells. We can now see how cancers react with cell lines or even inside the bodies of experimental animals. Due to the enormous range of colors that species have developed through evolution, we actually have the capability to personally witness the magnitude of microscopic interactions that have only ever been imagined before. Number two, RNAi. Scientists have been well aware of a system of co-suppression or quelling for quite a while. Plant biologists have known for a long time that overexpression of a gene or genes in a plant to create a more vibrant color will sometimes unexpectedly produce plants with variegated color patterns or even no pigment at all. In 1998, Craig Mellows and Andrew Fire published their work documenting the intentional silencing of genes in C. elegans via a new process called RNA interference. In RNAi, they would combine both the sense and the anti-sense sequence of a gene in order to produce a response. And that process is the same that is utilized throughout all of evolutionary development to defend against viruses that try to insert themselves into the DNA of an organism. The use of RNAi has become critical in the development of gene expression and suppression, and has helped researchers in identifying components of cellular processes, and as well as become a practical tool in many other biological fields. It's been so instrumental that Mellows and Fire were awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2006 for their discovery. Number one, CRISPR-Cas9. The idea of what eventually became CRISPR was originally described by Yoshizumi Ishino in 1987, albeit unknowingly, but it wasn't completely characterized under its eventual final name of clustered, regulatory, interspaced, short palindromic repeats until 2001 by Francisco Mujica and Rude Jansen. And more recently, CRISPR was fully realized as a gene editing tool when Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier re-engineered the Cas9 endonuclease and showed that the new system could be programmed to target any DNA sequence for cleavage. Doudna and Charpentier were subsequently awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2020 for their work. And while this new marvel of science is still incredibly young by the standards of the other discoveries on this list, the future and the real value of the CRISPR-Cas9 system might lie far beyond its ability to target genes and its use in gene therapy. Well, that wraps it up, and I hope you've enjoyed our list of biological discoveries. If you like this video and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button below and subscribe. Thanks for watching.